that your will be done in Jesus name have your way God on this prayer line today God we need you we need a miracle we need a breakthrough I decree and declare healing I decree and declare God that you are moving by your spirit I decree and declare Lord hallelujah that you honorable shot are giving us an experience like never before that we will know that it was only you who have brought us out who have showed up on our behalf in the name of Jesus so I pray for the mind today I decree and declare that we have the mind of Christ that stress have to go in the name of Jesus that by faith Lord we are speaking out of our mouths what it is Lord hallelujah that we are believing for you to do I rebuke and bind the spirit of fear that's trying to cripple us I come against all anxiety in the name of Jesus we will not have sleepless nights in Jesus name I pray against depression and oppression because your word says the joy of the Lord is our strength so I speak strength I speak joy upon your people oh God in Jesus almighty name father I ask that you forgive us right now for anything that is not of you anything that we said anything that we done anything that was not pleasing unto you Lord remove it Lord eradicate it Lord take it out if it's going to keep us from getting to you if it's going to keep us from getting closer to you destroy it now at the root in Jesus almighty name God we praise you we thank you and we give you the glory Lord have your way today speak Holy Spirit like only you can open up our ears that we can hear what the spirit is saying to the church in the mighty matchless name of Jesus I do pray and it is so amen hallelujah thank you for joining me on today and before I give what God gave me I just want to encourage somebody on today because I know that that this is this may be a season where somebody is going through and 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 you feel like you want to throw in the towel and it feel like the walls are caving in on you and every time you turn around there is a situation and some of us are even met with when the enemy is saying just kill yourself just just kill yourself nobody cares I come to let you know that God cares about what you're going through don't you dare give in the throw in the towel don't you dare give up don't you dare let go you hold on to God's hand because on the other side is victory on the other side is what you desire on the other side hallelujah is all that God has for you understand that when you are in a storm Jesus told the disciples he said we're going to the other side so you got the promise that you're going to go to the other side but there is a beginning and there is a middle and there is an end and some of us are in the middle and it seemed like glory to God that the winds and the waves are overtaking you but I come to let you know and I come to speak peace to your storm and to your mind and to encourage you that Jesus is in your boat and Jesus is sleep on your boat so you got to give it to God you got to cast your care the enemy want to wear you out with problems and situations but you better look and tell the devil in his face shout it back in the face of the devil I'm going to tell my problems about my great big God hallelujah I'm going to let my circumstance know that God can change he can do anything don't you dare allow the enemy to steal your joy about a situation because you got a promise that you're going to the other side things don't last always God is perfecting you God is establishing you God hallelujah is settling you glory to God hallelujah and you gotta go through a process hallelujah but you gotta trust the process you gotta relinquish it all over to him hallelujah let it go and let God I come to encourage you on today hold on to God's unchanging hand it'll be worth your while hallelujah when it cut double shot it's gonna be worth your while thank you Jesus glory to God hallelujah don't you dare give up 
You one hallelujah away from your breakthrough. You one thank you Jesus away from your miracle. Hallelujah. The enemy wants you to give up because you're too close to the miracle. See, you can always tell when you're close to the promise because all hell start breaking loose in your life. That's when you better start praising God like never before. That's when you better give him an in spite of praise. An in spite of hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm trying to move on. But God got me right here. Because somebody needs to know that you are too close to let go. Hallelujah. It's right there. And the enemy know it. So it's trying to bring the pressure. Hallelujah. To make you give up and turn away. Don't you dare forfeit your miracle. Don't you dare forfeit your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because it's right there. Hallelujah. If you would just open up your mouth and begin to clap your hands and begin to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, because it's right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Stay in position. Stay in the right position. Stay in the hard posture of expectation. No matter what you see, you walk by faith. You don't walk by sight. You can't look at what's going on around you. That's what the enemy wants you to do. You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. You got to keep walking. Hallelujah with the Lord. Don't look to the left and don't look to the right. I'm looking straight ahead. My eyes are on Jesus. I know it's crazy. I know it's going on around me, but I choose to look at God. I choose choose to trust in the Lord. I choose to stay focused. Some of you are allowing the enemy to distract you and it's breaking your focus. But today God said, I want you to have unbroken focus. I need you to focus on me. I need you to stay. Hallelujah. In the hard posture of expectancy. Don't move out of that place. Don't move out of faith. Hallelujah. Don't move out of the posture of faith. Stay right there and keep Keep on speaking what you need God to do. No matter what you see with your natural eyes. God is working behind the scenes. He's doing something that you can't see. Hallelujah. He's doing something that you can't see with your natural eyes. But you got to trust that God is doing it for you. He's working it out. Hallelujah. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. It's working for your good. It's coming together for your good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. Excuse me, but I'm excited about this thing. Glory to God. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The word that God has given me on today. Glory to God. He gave me, he said, <clears throat> what tree are you eating from? What tree are you eating from? Now, y'all know I like definitions, so I had to look up the word eat. It's a simple word to take into the mouth as food or to consume. And then I looked up the word appetite. And it says a strong desire or liking for something. The desire to eat. And the Lord said many of us have an appetite for the wrong things. You have an appetite for the world and the lust thereof. But not for spiritual things. So hallelujah. As I go further. Glory to God. And we're going to start at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 9. Glory to God. It says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So there was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Glory to God. Then drop down with me to Genesis chapter 2 verse 16. Now listen to what God said. And the Lord God took the man. This is he talking about Adam. 
and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Okay. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. You can eat whatever tree you want. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And you know what the Lord showed me? He said, you shall surely die if you're eating from that. Listen, listen to what the tree, the name of the tree. The name of the tree is knowledge of good and evil. That's why you got people, you and I, at some point, or we are, might be eating of that tree right now. That's why you got people that can do good and evil. They can love you one day and cuss you out the next day because they're eating from the wrong tree. They're eating from the wrong tree. And the Lord said, you may be alive in the natural, but spiritually you are dead. When you eat from that tree, of the knowledge of good and evil. What did he say? You will surely die. So your spirit man is dying. Because you're eating from the wrong tree. You're eating from a tree that gives you knowledge of how to do good and evil. That's not the tree that you. He said eat from the tree of life. Glory to God. So some of us are alive in the natural. Yeah, you breathing, you talking, you eating, but you're dead spiritually. And you know what? There is a spirit man up underneath this flesh. When you hear me speaking in tongues, that's my spirit man. And we can starve the spirit of God that's in us. And it's dead. Because we desire fleshly things. So what, what, when, when we have an appetite of flesh, what do we feed? We feed our flesh. And then our flesh overpowers the spirit man. And then you find yourself sinning all the time. Or in a whole bunch of mess. But if you have an appetite for the spiritual. See the problem is. Is that. We have a desire. We have a carnal mindset. Okay. The carnality. You, you, it's like you eat carnal candy. The things of the world. You don't think about the, 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 the spiritual thing. What does God want? How does God want me to handle this? How should I be living my life? You know the Bible says that we ought to be holy because he is holy. So you got to do a spiritual inventory of your life. Am I eating from the tree of life which causes me to walk in holiness? Or am I eating from the tree of knowledge and eat the tree of knowledge of knowing good and evil? That tree that teaches me how to be evil and good. No, I, I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be one day evil and one day good. I don't want to be confused. If I'm going to live holy, I'm going to live holy. And I'm going to eat from the correct tree. Because let me tell you something. What you eat, what you put in you, is what's going to come out of you. It's going to affect you. Let's talk about pork chop. Because I love pork chop. But I can't eat pork chop like that. Because it makes my blood pressure high and it gives me a bad headache. So I had to stop eating that. Okay. Some people can get away with it, but it don't work for me. When you realize that you've been eating something and consuming something that is pulling you away from God, you've been putting it, you've been taking it all in, looking at all this trash on Instagram and Facebook and all of that. Yeah, you got to make a choice. 
You either going to eat from the tree of life. You either going to allow God to, to, to put what he want to put in you. Or you're going to keep on allowing this stuff in your spirit. That's going to pull you away from God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Genesis 2, 16. No, I'm going to 17. No, 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Can I just give you a side note? When you are eating from the wrong tree, you don't realize your authority. We have dominion over this earth, over the air. We can speak a tornado or a storm back to the sea. Okay. That's the type of dominion and authority that we have. Now you just heard that God said in the Bible that whatever Adam named the animal, that's what the name was. We have authority. But when you're eating from the wrong tree, you don't understand your authority. You don't understand that you can walk in a room and command the atmosphere to shift and come under the subjection of the power of Jesus Christ. See, see, you don't understand that you are an atmosphere shifter and that you can call something that is not as though it was. But that's when you're eating from the tree of life. Because see what you speak out of your mouth becomes life because of the authority that you walk in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air, the birds, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found in help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. This is another side note. When you are eating from the wrong tree, you get connected with the wrong people. See, the one man was carved out of his rib. And when you're eating from the wrong tree, you don't know how to wait on God. For your uh, prospective mate. The one that God has already in the spirit realm for you. So the tree of life has the fruit of the spirit on it. And one of the fruit of the spirit is patience. But in the Bible it says long suffering. You have to be patient. And wait on God. Because what happens is. We get in all these wrong relationships. And, and, and they do nothing but take from us. They don't add. Every time you get into a relationship that's not of God, the devil takes a piece of you or he takes something from you. Glory to God. That's why you have to eat from the tree of life and it'll, it'll cause you to wait. You, you don't want to get connected with no demons coming in your life, disrupting your peace. What tree are you eating from? If every time you get around this person and you always frustrated and aggravated and agitated. It's time to disconnect and stop eating from when you stop eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You will see people will disconnect. God will remove them and you won't have no problem with it. Part of the problem why you're connected with these people is because you've taken a bite of the wrong tree you've eaten off the wrong tree and that bite and what you ate and what you consumed hallelujah gave you a desire for the wrong people you need kingdom connections people that got 
faith, people that have love, people that's not lying and manipulated, people that don't don't uh, 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 have doubt, people that are not full of negativity and drama and confusion, people that can pray for you, that are believe God, that are sit on the phone with you, hallelujah, and, and speak life into you when you feel like you about to give up. Those are the type of people you need. People that are eating from the tree of life to be connected to you. God said, I'm coming after that thing today. Glory to God. There shall be a separation. I hear the spirit of the Lord. That that he's going to begin to separate you from some people. Hallelujah. That were meant put in your pathway to destroy you. Because once you begin to connect back to the tree of life again, you're going to get wisdom and discernment and you're going to see them for who they really are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. You know why a lot of marriages, um, 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 they, 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 they are the divorce rate is at an all time high because of this right here. They don't know that they're supposed to be one. They got their single life and they got their single life and they trying to put two single lives together when you supposed to become one. And then you got people, hallelujah, I don't even know why I'm going here. You got people that are in relationships, but not married. Hallelujah. So you're eating from the other tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because it's evil for you to lay down with somebody who's not your spouse. We're all guilty of it. It was evil when I did it, and it's evil still this day. So God is coming after that thing. And, and those of you who are married, love your spouse like you love yourself. You ain't going to mistreat yourself. So don't mistreat your spouse because you are one. One. Glory to God in the body. You are one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I'm going to Genesis 3. I'm going to read this. Hallelujah. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He asking her a question that, that, that she already knew. He knew the answer to the question. When the devil come and tempt you, he already know what God said. Okay. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it. Lest ye die. What you doing talking to a serpent woman? Why are you talking to the devil? Why are you even allowing the enemy to come into your space? He belong up under your feet. So why are we even allowing the enemy like we know it's wrong? She literally just told the serpent what God said. So you know what to do, but then you turn around and do the opposite. Because you're eating from the wrong tree. That tree keeps you disobedient. It causes you to disobey God. Hallelujah. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Yes, you will. You're going to die spiritually. Yes, you will. If God said you're going to surely die, he meant, let me tell you something about God. God is not a man that he should repent, nor the, man, uh, 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 the son of man that he should lie. God don't have to repent. He is not going to lie to you. If this word says you shall surely die, you are going to die spiritually. If God said it, he meant it. So don't allow the enemy to come back and tell you, it's okay. 
You can do it. Go ahead and eat that tree. Go ahead and disobey God. Go ahead and turn against God. It's like a, you know what I hear God saying? It's like a, a be a bewitching taking place. Um, um, you being seduced and lured away from God. Don't let that spirit seduce you. Don't allow him to lure you away from God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, listen to this, y'all. The devil telling on himself. Then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Y'all hear that? He told on himself what he was trying to get them to do. All you got to do is sit back, and the enemy will expose himself. He said, your eyes are going to be open and you're going to know good and evil. I don't want to know good and evil. I only want to know holiness. I don't want to know how to hate someone. I don't want to know how to be jealous of someone. I don't want to know how to curse. I don't want to know how to, 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 to be disobedient. I don't want to know how to be angry. I don't want to know how to be lustful and be perverted. I don't want to know good and evil. I don't want to know. I want to know about the tree of life. I want to know what's going to pull me towards God. I don't want to know. Hallelujah. About mental issues and all of that. Had y'all understand that had they not done that, a lot of the things that we going through, we wouldn't even have to be going through. But God said, I'm coming to restore you back to before Adam and Eve fell and lost their place in the garden. By eating, repenting and turning and eating from the right tree. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, see, she looked at it. You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Because when you start looking, you take your, take your eyes off Jesus, you start looking at the wrong things. And it starts seducing you. And you start to walk over to it. And then you partake in the sin. What they did was sin. They disobe disobeyed God. Disobedience is a sin. That's a sin. Hallelujah. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be, listen, desired. She grew an appetite for that tree. Because what does appetite mean? A strong desire or liking for something. She had an appetite for the wrong tree. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. So this is what I'm, I'm going to stop right there. This is what the Lord gave me. First of all, y'all, y'all remember back when I read Genesis chapter 2 verse 23. It says she shall be called woman, right? She didn't have a name. She didn't have a name. She was just woman. The Lord said that you notice how the, the enemy, the snake came or the serpent came to the one that didn't have an identity. She didn't have a name. He didn't come to Adam. He came to the woman. You must know your identity. Okay. She didn't have a name yet. She really didn't have an identity. It was just the woman. She was just the woman. That came out of. That was carved. And made out of his rib. He approached her. Because she didn't have no identity. Then he used. Her. To lure him in. And you know what the Lord showed me? He said, be careful 
being around people that don't know their identity because they're in your life for a reason. Now, she ate of that tree. Then she gave it to her husband. It was relationship there. Friendship. Family. So you trust that person. I'm going to tell you right now, you living in the last and evil days. You got to get you some wisdom and discernment. If they don't know their identity, I don't need no advice from you. I don't want no counsel from you. I'm looking at your fruit. The Bible says you will know them by their fruit. And if their fruit didn't come from, glory to God, the tree of life, I don't want it. You got rotten fruit. I don't need that in my life. You can't leave me because you're going to hell and I'm not following you. You don't know your identity. You can't tell me nothing. I don't want nothing from you. I can go to God for myself. Get you a be around some people. Get you some people in your life that know their identity. That know who they are in God. That know what God said. That are obedient to God. That are eating from the tree of life. And will not pull you down the wrong road. You cannot allow others to pull you away from God. If they're eating from the wrong tree, get far away from them. I don't care if it's your brother. I don't care if it's your sister. I don't care if it's your mama. I don't care who it is. You have to stand before God for yourself. And as this word is coming in your hearing today, you have heard it. You know, you know that it came from God, from the scriptures. You can go search it yourself. Don't let nobody pull you away from God. He used the one that didn't know their identity to Lord the one who did. Mm -mm. We're not doing that no more. Today we draw the bloodline in Jesus name. Thank you Lord God. Thank you Jesus. I'm going dropping down to Verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sold fig leaves together. And they made themselves aprons. They weren't ashamed. Remember in, in, in the earlier verses in chapter 2. They were naked. They weren't ashamed. They ain't had no problem with it. They, they, they were walking around with no clothes on. It ain't phase them. When they ate of that tree. That's when they begin to see. That's how when you eat another wrong tree, you know what the Holy Spirit just dropped in my spirit. You complain and you murmur a lot. You see all that is wrong instead of all that is right. You see all the things that you don't have instead of looking at what you do have when you're eating from the wrong tree. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That's powerful. They heard his voice walking. Y'all let me tell you something. God is real. Thank you Jesus. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Y'all ever done that before? No you done done something wrong? I ain't going to church today. Mm-mm. There go that saved cousin. There go that saved auntie. Uh -uh, we got to go. They going to they, they, they know I did something wrong. I got to hide myself. I got to get away. I've got I, I, I been eating from the wrong tree. They going to read me. Let me get away from them. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. They didn't want to come near God because they knew what they had done. You can't hide from God. God see you. You can run, but you can't hide. You can run from church. You can run from prophetic words. You can run from the word of God, but he still see you. Where are you going? Where do you think you're going? God sit high and he look low. You ain't going nowhere. Hallelujah. So it's best for you to just repent. Don't try to hide. Don't run. Glory to God. And the Lord God called unto them. And Adam. Thank you Jesus. 
The Lord God called unto Adam and said, where art thou? Where you at? Why, why are you hiding? Where you at? Spiritually, I can't locate you. Because you done ate from the wrong tree. You were in my presence. But there's a disconnect from me and you now. Where, where you at? You used to read your word every day. But you started to eat from the wrong tree. You used to praise me. You used to have faith. Where are you? I don't know where you are. Because there's a disconnect. Because sin disconnects you from God. It separates you from you and your God. And if you're eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You're separated. Thank you Jesus. And he said I heard that voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I heard you calling me, God. I hear you calling me, but I ain't trying to come to you because I know what I did. I'm hiding myself. Thank you, Jesus. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Now listen to this. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Did you do what I told you not to do? I commanded you. I didn't just ask you. I commanded you. That means them, them 10 commandments, those are to be followed. He said, I commanded you. And you did it anyway. Glory to God. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree. And I did eat. You can't blame it on nobody else. You can't say. It was the devil. That devil made me curse. The devil sure is busy today. The devil is busy. Girl pray for me. Because the devil is so busy. Okay. He busy, but he shouldn't be able to move you. Because when you eat it from the tree of life, you can stand and rebuke that spirit. You can say, in the name of Jesus, I bind you up. I loose obedience over my life. I will not move in Jesus' name. I will obey God in the name of Jesus. Satan, I shut your mouth. I silence you in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, you can talk back to the devil. You tell the devil, get thee behind me. I don't want to hear what you got to say. Shut up in the name of Jesus. You have no power. You have no authority. You may be busy, but I'm busier praising my God, eating from the tree of life, giving my God glory with my life. Hallelujah. I ain't got time to entertain you. Glory to God. You don't got to be afraid of the enemy. The same way you just heard me. That this is how I talk to the devil. What you not going to do is disrupt my atmosphere. What you not going to do is use my children to aggravate me. I bind you up in the name of Jesus. So you got to have some authority. That come from eating of the tree of life. Knowing who you are and your identity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord said unto the woman. What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Can you stop? Can we stop allowing the enemy to trick us? Can, can we stop doing that? She said, the serpent beguiled me. He tricked me. I did eat. He tricked me. Let me tell y'all something. Okay. The devil was kicked out of heaven. And he won his place back. And God won't let him come back. So the enemy knows that we can come to God. And we can ask for forgiveness. And we, be, and we can be reconciled when we repent. He'll forgive us. So the enemy hates us. Because it's like you forgive them but you won't let me back in. So then he says I'm going to go and trick them. And have them to do 
you know, whatever I want them to do. And then I'm going to go back to God and accuse them before God and say they did the same thing I did. The Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He stands before God accusing us. But God justifies us when we repent. He can never get that. He's trying to take as many people to hell as he can. That's why you got to stop eating from that tree. That's the wrong tree. You cannot be tricked anymore today. Now that you know what he's trying to do. Now that you have learned your adversary. He's trying to get me to cuss. He's trying to get me to punch somebody. He's trying to get me to whatever. Whatever goes against the ordinance of God. He's trying to get me to disobey. So I can go to hell with him. No. I ain't going to hell. Hell ain't made for me. I'm a worshiper. I need to be in heaven with Jesus. And I'm not going to spend my entire life on this earth. The rest of my life on this earth. Going to church. Reading the scriptures. To die and go to hell. The devil is a liar. You got to make a decision today. Either you're going to eat from the tree of life or you're going to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You got to choose. You have to choose. You got to choose. It's your choice. God is a perfect gentleman. He's not going to make you do anything. You have to choose. Glory to God. I'm going to read Genesis 23 and 24. I'm going to start with 22. I'm sorry. And the Lord God said, behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Did y'all hear that? He drove him out of the garden. He lost his place in the garden. Everything they needed was in that garden. If he would have just obeyed. We lose when we eat from the wrong tree. We lose peace. We lose love. We lose joy. We lose patience. If you are frustrated and angry all the time, perhaps you are eating from the wrong tree. If you are depressed and oppressed all the time, perhaps you are eating from the wrong tree. If you are repeating cycle after cycle, whether it be relational, social, Financial, perhaps you are eating from the wrong tree because obedience breaks the cycle. Stop eating from that tree and eat from the knowledge uh, and eat from the tree of life. Stop eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and eat from the tree of life and you will break the cycles in your life. I hear the Holy Ghost say your obedience breaks your cycles. You ain't got to worry about no cycles if you obey. If you stop eating from the wrong tree. Hallelujah. Go with me to Matthew chapter 5. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 5. Hallelujah. Verse. Thank you Jesus. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You want to know why you're empty? Because your appetite and your hunger is for the wrong tree, for the things of the world. But when you hunger after righteousness, you will be filled. You will be complete. You will be made whole when you're eating from the tree of life. What are you hungry for today? Are you hungry for the things of God? Are you hungry to find out what your purpose is? Are you hungry to find out why you came from your mother's womb? Or, or did you get attached to this world? I hear you, Holy Ghost. Did you get attached to this world? You done forgot why you came through your mother's womb. To do the will of God. 
But see, when you're eating from the wrong tree, you don't have a desire to carry out the assignment that is on your life. And I hear God say that some of us are, are feeling dead and empty because what, what is that tree called? It's called the tree of life. And guess what? When you eat of it, you become alive. You become active. You become full of life. He said, I came that you may have joy I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So that means an abundance of joy, an abundance of peace, an abundance of faith. But but the enemy came that what he come to do? Kill, steal, and destroy. That's why he wants you to eat of that tree. So you can lose your place. So you can die and go to hell with him. God said, change your diet. Change your spiritual diet and your appetite. Your spiritual appetite. So that you won't crave the wrong things. How you going to say you love yourself. But you, 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 you put things in your body. In your spiritual man that, that is not of God. We're renting these bodies y'all. Okay. We belong to Jesus. Our temple belongs to Jesus. So we have to honor God with our bodies. In every area. And you got the hunger for God and thirst for him. For righteousness. For the good things. For, for the holy things. The things that's going to take you to heaven. I'm telling you right now. You don't want to go to hell. Hell is hot. You don't want to go there. Ain't no windows. Ain't no doors. You can't call on mama. You can't call on daddy. You can't call on husband or wife. Your children can't save you. Once you in there. You are in there. There's no attackable shut up. There's no way out. You ain't getting out. And I got to tell you. I got to be real with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Glory to God. Go with me to Deuteronomy 30. 30 uh, verses 15 through 20. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verses 15 through 20. The Bible says, see, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Did y'all hear that? Life is associated with good. Death is associated with evil. If you do evil, if you don't live right, the wages of sin is death. You die spiritually, your soul will go to hell. Thank you, Jesus. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgment, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land, whither thou goest to possess it. Do y'all understand that when you do what God tell you to do, you become blessed. There are some there are some things that you are desiring that is only going to come when you stop being disobedient to God. Can I be real on today? What you are wanting God to perform in your life is going to come when your life lines up with his word. When you stop eating from the wrong tree and eat from the tree of life. When your appetite changes, when your spiritual diet changes to the righteousness and the holiness of God. He said, if you keep my commandments, you're going to live long. You're going to multiply and I'm going to bless you. Glory to God. It said, but if thine heart turn away. That thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. 
can I tell you on today that when you have an appetite for the world, hallelujah, and you're eating from the wrong tree, the tree of knowledge, of knowing good and evil, you are, I can guarantee you, you got some idols in your life. You are idolizing people. You are idolizing that job. You are idolizing your children. There's an idol somewhere when you're eating from the wrong tree. And God says, I want you to lay down your idols today. Whatever you're putting before me, Instagram can be an idol. Facebook can be an idol. Whatever you are giving more of your time than God, that has become your God. You don't got to sit there and bow down to no golden image for you to have an idol. It's what you're giving yourself to more than you're giving yourself to God. Do you spend time with God or are you too busy? Because see, when you eat from the tree of life, there's a desire to get into his presence. You remember that Adam ran from God and hid himself from the presence of the Lord because he was eating from the wrong tree. But when you are eating and you are connected to God, you desire to spend time with him, to worship him, to read your Bible, to pray, to fast. The things of God, the things that are going to push you towards God. But when you are eating from the wrong tree, you have idols. God said, I'm coming after your idols. Even money. Money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Glory to God. Lay it down. Disconnect yourself from the devil. Tell the devil, I'm no longer accessible to you. I'm selling out for Jesus. I don't want nothing to do with you. I'm tired of you destroying my life. I'm tired of being frustrated. I'm tired of being confused. I'm sick and tired. And I want peace. And I want all that God has for me. Let the devil go. Let that tree of knowledge of good and evil go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 18 says, I denounce you unto this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over to Jordan to go to possess it. He said, I call heaven and earth to record this day, to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that, thou, that both thou and thy seed may live. You know what the Lord gave me? I'm going to read this to y'all one more time because I'm, I'm going to help you. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. The Lord says, I'm breaking generational curses. Did you hear that? That you and your seed will live? He said, I'm breaking the generational curse. Because see... Your family members before you, they got it wrong. But God says, if you take this word today and apply it to your life, he said the generational curses will be broken off of you and you will be able to experience generational blessings. You and your seed and seed seed will live and they will eat from the tree of life because you decided to break it. Some of the stuff y'all going through is generational. And you know what I told the devil? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm the one. I'm the one that's going to break the cycle. I'm the one that's going to eat from the tree of life. So my children won't have to go through what I went through. And their children won't have to go through what I went through. And what my mama and the people before went through. I'm breaking it. Lord, you can use me. Hallelujah. He says, I'm breaking generational curses where your family ate from the wrong tree, but you will get it right in Jesus name. God says, you're going to get it right. You're going to be the one. Can you decree and declare over yourself? Can you lay your hands on your chest and say, I'm the generational curse breaker in my family in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
And it said that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life. God is your life. And the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. And I just want to talk about one more thing. Glory to God. And, and I'm just going to paraphrase it. But take this down. John, the book of John chapter 15. I want you to read um, verses 1 through 8. I'm just going to read the first couple of verses. Glory to God. And I'm closing after this. Hallelujah. John chapter 15, it says, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide, abide in me. Let me tell you something. Unless you connect it to the true vine, you can't do nothing. You cannot do anything. It says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same forth bringeth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So while you eating from that tree of knowledge of knowing good and evil, you ain't prospering. You ain't bearing fruit. You ain't doing the will of the father. Some of y'all have a, a disconnection. You know how, how um, you using Wi-Fi, right? And that Wi-Fi goes out and it says reconnecting or trying to, you know, it's trying to establish another connection so that it can start back working again. Well, some of you have had an interference in your connection with God. And then some of you need to connect to God. So some of us got to reconnect because there was an interference in the connection. And then some of us need to connect to God and never let go. This is the last and evil days. You can't be eaten from the wrong tree in these days. I can guarantee you it's tight, but it's right. But you're going to lift your eyes up in hell. You got to reconnect back to the true vine. We are the branches. Okay. We're just branches that are supposed to be producing fruit. But if you're not connected to a vine, how can you produce anything? Jesus is that vine. And we have to eat from the tree of life. You got to connect yourself. Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the life. When you eat of me, when, when you hunger and thirst after me, I give you life. I give you a new life. I do a new thing in you. I turn your life around. I make you, they, they, they know your old life, but they see you now and say, what in the world? She used to be something else, but God is truly you. They won't be able to deny that God is with you. How long will you hold on to the devil? How long will you eat that which is destroying you? Oh, glory. How long will you allow the enemy to trick you? God says, make a choice today. I am the vine. Connect to me. And I'm going to cause you to be productive. You got to uh, connect that plug into the power source. You ain't got no power when you are disconnected from God. That's why the enemy can come and wreak havoc in your life. Because you ain't got no power. Because you disconnected from the power source. By eating from the wrong tree. That tree make you doubtful. That tree makes you fearful. That tree makes you stagnant and complacent. When you're eating from the wrong tree. Hallelujah. What tree are you eating from on today? What are you putting on your inside? Are you sowing seeds to your flesh or to your spirit? But God says today, I want my people to eat from the tree of life. 
I want them to be obedient to me. I want them to let go of their idols. I want them to serve me with all of their heart, all of their soul, all of their mind. I, God says, I want all of you. He says, I want all of you. I want you to give me your whole heart. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. What tree are you eating from? Ha.